Itanye na tesmai shri gurave namaha Nama om Vishnu padaya Krishna pristaya bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Vesesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hatvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the nectar of devotion at the level of Bhakti Shastri and today is lesson number four. So uh, I'll switch to the, the PowerPoint presentation. Did you all get the PDF file? Yes? Yes, Maharaj. Good. Did you look at, did you read it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we send it. Okay. All right, so here we go. Slideshow. Oh. Okay. Yeah, somebody's coming. Let them in. What's happening? Who put this on the screen? Who put this thing on the screen here about group work? Where did that come from? Mother, um, just now you, you touched that uh, pastor. This one maybe from there coming. So from, you should. From where? I should just now you touched that uh, pastor. Maharaj, click on undo. Yeah. Go in again. Huh? Oh no, not that one. So you click on undo on top, top left. The, the top. arrow, this, 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 this way there is an arrow. There's an arrow where? On the top left corner, it's a bit this, this type. You can see my finger? It's undo. Step back, actually. Recording stopped. Sudarshan Pabu, you can send the uh, send the PPT to Maharaj now. I can I send now once? Shall I send it again? No, Maharaj? I don't think you need. Well, I I don't think we need. To, maybe maybe you put the screen up. Okay, 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 fine. I just start. Who's telling me screen share? Have you done it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Okay, go ahead.
Recording in progress. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, next slide. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Let's see this whole verse. Does everyone know this verse now? Have you learned the verse? Let's, yes. we'll chant, I'll chant it first, you can repeat. Anya bila sita shunyam. Anya bila sita shunyam. Gyana kadmadya navritam. Go back. Gyan. Yeah. Anu ku yena krishna no. Anu ku yena krishna no. Shilanam bhakti utama. Shilanam bhakti utama. Okay. Now you chant. Let me hear each one of you chant it. Anna Vilashita Shunya Gyana Karmadi Anna Vitam Anu Anu Kalinya Krishna Nu Shilanam Bhakti Ruttama. Okay. And then what about Bhak Bhakta Vatsala Nashinga? Sunya Vilashita Sunyam Gyana Karmadhyana Vitam. Anukulye Nakrishnanu Shilanam Bhakti Ruttama. Alright, and then we have also Shashi Kan Shashi Khan. Shashi Khan has not yet joined. Oh. Is there another boy there? Another man there? What's what's your name? What's your name, Prabhu? Ilyas. What? Ilyas. Not not initiated, so normal name. So, what's your name? What is your name? Elias. I can't hear it. It's Elias. 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 Yeah. Elias. Okay, Elias. Back to Elias. Prabhu, go ahead. And yeah, we love to touch on Yam Jana Karma Dhyan. Oh, sorry. Yam Jana Karma Dhyan Vratam. Anu Kuliyena Krishna Nu Shidanam Bhakti Rutatma. Okay. Lila Avatar Mediji. Yes. Anya Vila Sita Shunyam Gyana Karmadya Navritam Anukoyena Krishna no Silanam Bhaktiro Tama. Yes, good. Shobamai Mataji. Krishna Maharaj. Anya Bila Shita Shunyam Nyana Karma Diana Vritam Anukulina Krishna Nushila Nambakti Ruttama. Yes, very, very good. Yes. Naraini Maraji. Uh, Krishna Maharaj. Anya Bila Shita Shunyam Nyana Karma Diana Vritam Anukulina Krishna Nushila Nambakti Ruttama. Yes, very nice. Yes. We have another. Uh, uh, what about. Uh, Lil, uh, Maylin. Maylin. Is she there? No, she's not there. Okay, Shitala Mantiji. Anya Vila Sita Surya Vyana Karma Dhyana Prata Anukurina Krishna Nu. Yes. yes, very good. Yes, very nice. Okay. Is that everybody? Anybody didn't chant yet? No, I didn't chant, chant yet. Who is this? Uh, my name is Vibhu Chaitanya. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Anya Bila Shita Sanyam Jnana Karmadi Anavritam Anukulyana Krishnanu Sila Nam Bhakti Ruttama. Okay, yes. Go ahead. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Sudarshan. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Sarvapadi vinir muktam tat paravenam nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchate. Yes. Shobhamai Mataji, Chan. 
Yes, Maharaj. Sarvo padhivi nirmuktam tatparatvena nirmalam hrishikena hrishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchyate. Yes, Narayane. Sarvo padhivi nirmuktam tatparatvena nirmalam hrishikena hrishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchyate. Yes, okay. Then Sudarshan Prabhu. Sarvapadi vinir muktam tat parve tat parvena nirmalam rishikesh rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchyate. Okay, Bhakta Vatsala Nishinga. Sarvapadi vinir muktam tat parat vena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchyate. Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu. Sarvapadi vini muktam tat prata tat paratvena nirmalam rishikesha rish no rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti uchyate. Okay, and then Ilyas Prabhu? Sarvapadi vini muktam tat paratvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti uchyate. Yes, little avatar? Sarvapati vinyar muktam tataparatve na nirmalam risike na risike sha seva nam bhaktir uchate. Yes. And then Sitala? Sarvapati vinyar muktam tataparatve na nirmalam vishke na vishke sha seva nam bhaktir uchate. Okay, very good. Anybody didn't chant yet? Everybody chanted? Okay, those are the two memorization verses. You have to learn these two verses. You should know the translation also. Okay, go ahead Prabhu. Sudarshan, next slide. Yes. Okay, revision. Revision. We performed an overview of the non. We're doing revision. We over, we had an overview of the six characteristics of pure devotional service, and at what stage they manifest. Define the term klesh agni. Who remembers what the word klesh agni means? Any yes. We approach the material distress. What? Material. Relief, relief from the material distress. Okay. Yes. And the four kinds of effects of sin. Who knows? Four kinds of effects of sin. Krishna yes, Maharaj, you go ahead. Yeah, it is uh, Aprarabdha or the unmanifest. Yes. Then Kutam, which yes. is uh, sinful propensity. Then Bijam, which is uh, ready to manifest. And Prarabdha, which is already manifest. Okay, good. Yes, right. And how to vote, part to nullify all these sinful reactions. Okay, go ahead, Prabhu. Why devotional service is the best? Okay, go ahead. Lesson four. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go go ahead. All right. These are the six characteristics. We'll look at them today. We looked yesterday. We looked at klesh agni, meaning get relief from material distress. So today we will begin by looking at Shubhada. Yes, go ahead. Okay. You remember, there are three different levels of devotional service. And they're all pure devotional service. You may be doing sadhana bhakti, you can be a pure devotee. You may do bhava bhakti, you'd be a pure devotee. And if you do prema bhakti, you're also 
can be pure devotee. But there are different characteristics at each level. In sadhana, the first the characteristics is klesh agni and shubhada. Bhava bhakti, four characteristics. And prema bhakti, all six characteristics. Go ahead. All right. Shubhada, meaning pure devotional service is all auspicious. Yes. Go ahead, Prabhu. Go ahead. Okay, so what does, what does it mean to be auspicious? It means there are three, there are four qualities. Man. Go ahead. It's a little more. Ah, yes, right. Okay. There are four different things happen with Subhada. Four different characteristics are shown. Subhada, meaning auspicious for if go back. Shubhada, compassion for everyone. First of all, should be compassionate for everyone. Means you, you think about everyone, you want to give Krishna consciousness everywhere to everyone. And then the second thing attracts everyone. Attracts every Krishna consciousness, Krishna's all attractive. So when we present Krishna consciousness, everyone should be attracted. Every every living entity, even the birds and the the dogs and all living entities, they're all attracted by Krishna consciousness. And then bestows good qualities by doing devotional service. A devotee will naturally develop good qualities. In the beginning we don't have good qualities. Before becoming devotees, we're not very good, but we develop good qualities quickly in Krishna consciousness. By coming to devotional service, then we develop good qualities. Or we should do, <laughs> right? And then finally, bestows superior happiness, superior happiness. There is, a, there is one level of happiness for the dogs and the hogs, and there's a different level of happiness for the devotees. There's different kinds of happiness. Have you already studied the Bhagavad Gita? Yes. Huh? Yes. You already studied Bhagavad Gita, yes? So you know there is happiness in goodness, happiness in passion, and happiness yes. in ignorance, right? Yes. Do you know? You can tell me what is happiness in goodness? A sense of knowledge and happiness. Uh -oh. Happiness in ignorance. In, in. Who knows what is happen? How is happiness described in the mode of goodness? Uh, derived uh, from knowledge. That's not Thank how is mother. how is it, how is it described in the Bhagavad Gita? Uh, it's it's a big, begin like a poison, uh, but end like nectar. In the beginning, it's like poison. Right. In the beginning it's not very pleasant, but gradually it becomes nectar. Right? That is happiness. In the, and what is happiness in the mode of passion? It begins begin like a, a nectar, um, and like a poison. It begins like nectar and very quickly becomes like poison. Right? And what is happiness in the mode of ignorance? Delusion. 
conclusion from beginning to end. Yes, thank you, Mataji. Very good. Okay. So, happiness in devotional service gives superior happiness, the higher happiness, not the happiness of the dog and the pig, but the higher taste. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also speaks about the, the higher taste, the param dristva, right? Do you know that verse in the Bhagavad Gita? Who knows the verse in the Bhagavad Gita about higher taste? Vishaya vini vartante. Vishaya vini vartante. You know the verse? No, nobody yes. knows. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Maharaj. Vishaya vini vartante. Miraha rasya dehinaha. Rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate. Yes, good. Do you know the translation? Um, Yes, Maharaj, I don't know exactly, but it is uh, by, by engaging in, by experiencing a higher taste, one stops engagement in material activities and he, is, um, he gets that higher happiness. Yes, yes, the translation, the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, but the taste for sense objects remains. But ceasing such pleasure by experiencing a higher taste then he is fixed in consciousness, right? So we want to become fixed, we want to get the higher taste. Okay, well go ahead Prabhu, go ahead, next slide. Okay, who would like to read for us? Who is not? Oh, Bhakta Bhatsavna Sringa Prabhu, you can read for us this. Srila Rupa Goswami no, has from given the top, from the top. Okay. Subhane prinam prinanam sarva jakatam anuruktata. Compassion for everyone and attracts everyone. Srila Rupa Goswami has given a definition of auspiciousness. He says that actual auspiciousness means welfare activities for all the people of the world. The Krishna consciousness movement is so nice that it can render the highest benefit to the entire human race. Everyone can be attracted by this movement and everyone can feel the result. Therefore, Sudarshan? Rupa Goswami and other learned scholars agree that a broad propaganda program for the Krishna consciousness movement of devotional service all over the world is the highest human humanitarian welfare activity. Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1, Auspicious, First Paragraph. Krishna consciousness is all auspicious. First paragraph, yes. All right, so this is a Krishna consciousness is a welfare program and it's, it's the highest humanitarian welfare program. We are welfare workers. We're, we're trying to help people to have a better life. We, so it's talked, we talk about being compassionate for others. Therefore, Prabhupada has written that Rupa Goswami and other scholars, they wanted a propaganda program for Krishna consciousness movement. Some, sometimes people don't like it. They say, oh you Hare Krishna people, you're always out there, you're always making so much noise and disturbing people and telling people about things. Prabhu, can we keep that same slide? Please don't change the slides till I tell you. All right, so compassion is important and part of our compassionate work, uh, our compassionate nature is to distribute Krishna consciousness for everyone. And in order to distribute it, we make propaganda, we put on what do we do to make propaganda? Can you think of some ways, Bhaktavatsa Sauna Prabhu? Um, 
What is some propaganda program we can do to propagate Krishna consciousness? Food for life. Food for life, okay, yeah. They have a big food for life program in some countries. They do very, especially with the pandemic, there's a lot of hungry people. There's many people in need of, you know, food. They have no job. A lot of people have no job, no money. And so we give food, for, give prasadam for people. It's a propaganda. What, are, are there any other programs, Prabhu? Festivals like Rathyatra? Yes, right. Rathyatra festivals. Yeah. Good. Propaganda. Marriages. You can think of some propaganda programs. Damodar Arti programs. Damodar Arti. Yeah, getting everybody to offer a lamp to Lord Damodar. It's very nice. Get how many people you can get to offer a lamp. Now we go out in the public and we invite people come and offer a lamp, offer a candle to Lord Damodar. Introducing people to Krishna consciousness. So this is, this is our welfare work and it, it, it helps people to develop their Krishna consciousness. They have a contact, they develop some contact. I met one devotee, one man, well not, he wasn't a devotee, I met this one man, he, he was in, in Australia and he told me he was running in the, the Sydney Marathon. <laughs> You know, they, have, they were having these, they have these things, the marathon, so they had the Sydney Marathon. So he said he was running in the Sydney Marathon, and he just remembers, he said, at the end of the marathon, I just remember this devotee came and he gave me an orange, and it was so good. Oh, he said, I'd been running the marathon, and he, they came with, with this orange, and it was so nice, and I'll never forget, <laughs> you know? So the devotees had come there to the marathon and they were giving oranges to all the people running in the race. So this one man remembered how he got this orange from the devotee. And so he was thinking about Krishna, he was thinking about the devotees. Very nice. This is how we people get some seed of devotion, they get some contact with the Krishna consciousness movement. And that can lead to them in the future they may do more service for Krishna. Okay Prabhu go ahead next slide. Satguna produces good qualities. Yeah do you know this verse? I don't. Yashyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinchana sarvair gunais tatra samaste suraha harava bhakta shya kuto mahadguna Mano ratena sati davato bahi. All right. Trans translation. You go ahead, Prabhu. Read. All the, all the demigods and their exalted qualities, such as religion, knowledge, and renunciation, become manifest in the body of one who has developed unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev. On the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in material activities has no good qualities. Even as he, if he is adept at the practice of mystic yoga or the honest endeavor of maintaining his family and relatives, he must be driven by his own mental speculations and must engage in the service of the Lord's external energy. How can there be any good qualities in such a man? Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, 18th chapter, 12th verse. Yes, right. So one who is a devotee has all the good qualities and this is the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam to support it. But one who is not a devotee, even though he may be very expert, it's, it said even he's very expert at mystic yoga or at maintaining his family and relatives, he may do these things very well. But if he's not a devotee, if he's not doing any devotional service, then he has no good qualities. Why? Because he's under the material energy. And when you're under the material energy, sometimes you may be in goodness, sometimes you may be in passion, sometimes you may be in ignorance. It's going to vary. It's not going to be 
steady unless you're doing devotional service. All right? So devotee has good qualities. He should have the good qualities. If we're actually steady in devotional service, then we will have all the good qualities. And they're mentioned, religion, knowledge, renunciation. All right? Prabhupada went to the post office one time in India and, and, and Prabh, the man was asking Prabhupada about, you know, why you do all of this, why you do all of this chanting and everything. So Prabhupada was explaining to him about devotional service. And so the man in the post office was saying to Prabhupada, well, I'm an honest man. I don't do anyone any harm. I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't cheat anybody. But Prabhupada told him, he said, yes, but if you're not doing devotional service, then your condition is not fixed. Sometimes you will be in goodness, sometimes in passion, sometimes in ignorance. Just like somebody, you may be, you know, quite a good person, but sometimes you get angry and you get very passionate and you may shout and quarrel with people. And sometimes you, we become influenced by the mode of ignorance. We become lazy, we become dirty, and we may do even bad things. Do you understand the importance of devotional service? This is a, the scriptural verse from the fifth canto, Lord Rishabdev's teachings, I think. Okay, well, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. A Krishna conscious boy, even if he is not very well educated by, by the university standard, can immediately give up all illicit sex life, gambling, meat eating and intoxication. Whereas those who are not in Krishna consciousness, although very highly educated, are often drunkards, meat eaters, sex mongers and gamblers. These are practical proofs of how a Krishna conscious person becomes highly developed in good qualities Whereas a person who is not in Krishna Consciousness cannot do so. Mm -hmm. In Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 1, Krishna Consciousness is all auspicious, fifth paragraph. Yes, people may be highly educated, they may be even professors in the university, but you'll, fi you'll find they're often drunkards and they, they're all meat eaters practically, and they, they smoke like anything. Oh my goodness, they smoke, they may smoke a pipe, but they smoke something. They smoke cigarettes, they smoke pipes, they smoke, and they drink, and um, all meat eaters, they have no good, good qualities. Because, uh, even though they're highly educated, they may have PhDs, they may be in, in the professors, but they don't have good qualities, they, you don't see the good qualities. But a devotee, one who is actually a devotee, no intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating, no illicit sex. So these are very special qualities and these qualities are seen there in a devotee. But people who are not devotees, how often do you find somebody who is not a devotee who follows these four principles? <laughs> very rare. Very rare. Most people, all meat eaters and drunkards. All right, go ahead. So come, bestow superior happiness. Happiness derived from pure devotional service is the highest because it is eternal. Third paragraph. Mayavadi sannyasis descend to the material platform again. Fourth paragraph. No difference between mystic perfection and materialistic perfection. Sixth paragraph. One can derive great amounts of temporary happiness by achieving such yogic materialistic perfections. Tenth paragraph. The happiness derived from devotional service in Krishna consciousness is so transcendental and so unlimited that no other happiness can compare to it. Thirteenth paragraph. All right, so this is from 
All of the above are from the Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 1, Happiness in Krishna Consciousness. So, we want you to understand how simply by doing devotional service, you get the highest happiness, su superior happiness. First point is mentioned that the happiness from pure devotional service is the highest because it is eternal. Now, in the material world, we don't have any happiness which is eternal. The happiness of the material world is very short. It's, it's very short, very temporary. But the happiness of devotional service, that's there all the time. It's eternal. Just like we chant Hare Krishna, we get happiness from it. We chant the same mantra again and again, we get happiness from it. Material world, you may have, you do the same thing again and again. The more you do it, the more boring it becomes and the more you dislike it. And so the happiness of devotional service is a very special taste. And then we mention about the Mayavadi sannyasis. They descend to the material platform again. Why do they come back to the material world again? Anybody know? Not out of preach. Huh? Preach Krishna consciousness. Mayavadi sannyasis come back to the material world to preach Krishna consciousness. Oh. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, because, uh, because uh, there, there are still material desire. They come back to the material world because they still have material desires? Maharaj, actually, Mayabadi Sanyasis, they think that they can be one with Krishna. <laughs> Then they feel that they were one with Krishna, but they are in a uh, thing of inactivity. So they come back. So they come back. Yeah, they want. To, they go to the. They get to the. Well, where do they go? Where are they coming back from? Brahman Maharaj. Brahman is. Yes. From where? From the Brahman platform. From the Brahman. Brahman. Yes. They've, they've achieved, they achieved liberation, but they achieved the impersonal liberation, right? Absolutely, yes. They went only to the Brahma Jyoti. They entered into the Brahma Jyoti. And so they were in the Brahma Jyoti. So why didn't they just stay there? Why did they come back to the material platform? Now we hear that uh, in Srila Bhagavatam and the Gaita because they don't, they don't get shelter at the little speed of Krishna. So, because of lack of shelter, that shelter, they descend down. Because Jiva is always active. Okay, so uh, first of all, Shashi Khan says because they didn't get shelter from Krishna, they didn't have any shelter, they, were, they had achieved oneness with the Brahma and to the Brahman. But, what's the problem with that oneness in the Brahman? Why did, why they didn't just stay there? There is no personal relationship over there. So to have, to get that happiness, we, one needs to serve another person. But in the Brahman level, it is, the, 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 there, there is impersonalism, there is no activity, there is no service, and uh, therefore there is no bliss. Right. So they yes. only sun and chit. Yes, there's no relationships, there's no activities. Very boring for them, right? Very boring. If you go somewhere and there's no, no relationship, there's no activities, nothing. There's only the oneness, only you, nothing else. <laughs> then you want to come back. So they come back, they go there to the Brahma Jyoti and then they come back, come back to the material world. They didn't get the happiness which 
the soul wants, they get, they get some little happiness because they get free of the material life. They get free from the material world. So there is some little glimpse of happiness. But the happiness of that liberation, that impersonal liberation, that happiness is very small compared to the happiness of devotional service. Of course, these people are not devotees. They're not going to do devotional service. But they come back to the material world because, as you are saying, they want activity. They want to do something. The nature of the soul is to be active. So they're not comfortable on that impersonal platform and they come back to the material world again. All right, and then it's mentioned no difference between mystic perfection and materialistic perfection. All right, mystic perfection, the yoga siddhis. That you know, you know about the the yoga siddhis. How many yoga siddhis are there? Is it eight, Maharaj? Yes, eight asta siddhis. Yes, the asta siddhis. Can you tell me one or two of them? Um, I've heard about anima. Um, Lagu. Lagu, yeah. What, what, what is that? What is anima? Uh, is it that the person can become very small? That he can enter into a, a, even a stone or even a small... Yes, right. You can become smaller than the smallest. Ah. And any other thing you can... What the other things you can do? Something? What's lagima? Anima, lagima. One, you can become very small. Another is you can come, become very... If one is becoming very big, then very heavy, very light. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, yes, right. We can become... To create a planet. All right. So why is there no difference between this and materialistic perfection? Can you tell me, Prabhu? Yeah, because, I don't know if it's written or no, I think I've heard it somewhere. Because to become smaller than the smallest, that's, I don't know, useful for going through mountains or something, but then we also can dig a tunnel and do all these things we can also achieve with material science. Yes. In a normal, okay, we can't create a planet, but many of the things we can do by yeah, machines and other things. Right, yes, right. Materialistic perfections. You can do things like fly in the air, right? The yogi can fly. No, we can also fly, right? There's one airline, they say, now everyone can fly. <laughs> That was their motto, right? Now, now nobody wants to fly, of course, <laughs> not, not so common, but before, now everyone can fly. So materialistic perfection, that's, so, and that's what you get from mystic perfection. So the, the, the yogis, they work very hard to walk across water, you know, with great endeavor, they may get the power, they can walk over the water, but we can go in the boat. Get the same perfection. What's the difference? No, why spend so much time to get some yoga powers? So that's the point. And then one can derive great amounts of temporary happiness by achieving such yoga materialistic perfections. Yeah, temporary happiness, that's the point. Yoga, materialistic perfections is temporary. It's not going to be eternal happiness. Some little happiness, oh, I'm so great. You become very proud, I'm so powerful, I'm so great, I can walk on water. <coughs> And then, finally, the happiness derived from devotional service in Krishna consciousness is so transcendental and so unlimited that no other happiness can compare to it. So that, 
we have to realize for ourselves. The happiness of Krishna consciousness is so great that there's no ha nothing can compare to it. The, can you think of some examples? Anybody got that kind of happiness? That he didn't want anything else? Anyone? You can think of some examples? I don't want any other happening. I just want devotional service. Dhruva Maharaj, right? Dhruva Maharaj went to the forest. He wanted to get a kingdom. But after the Lord came to see him, then Dhruva Maharaj said, I came here looking for broken glass, but I found the most beautiful jewel. So the happiness of material life it's like broken glass, it's of no value. But the happiness of Krishna consciousness is like the beautiful jewel. So Dhruva Maharaj had that realization. And we see also Gajendra, Gajendra the elephant, he was in distress and he prayed to the Lord to deliver him. And when the Lord came and freed him from the crocodile, Gajendra was not happy. He said, why you killed the crocodile? He got liberated. I still have to stay here in the material world with this elephant body. You should have killed me. I prayed to you. Like that. So happiness, you get the highest happiness in Krishna consciousness, Sukham. Okay, go ahead Prabhu, next slide. Yes, somebody can, yeah, Bhakta Bhaksamana Shringa, you're doing good. Sukham, bestow superior happiness. My dear Lord, I repeatedly pray unto your lotus feet that I may, I may simply be stronger in devotional service. I simply pray that my Krishna consciousness may be, may be more strong and steady. Because happiness derived out of Krishna consciousness and devotional service is so powerful that with it one can have all the other perfections of religiousness, economic development, sense gratification, and even the attainment of liberation from material existence. Pralat Maharaj and Hari Bhakti Suddhaya, Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1, Happiness in Krishna Consciousness, 12th paragraph. Thank you. So Pralat Maharaj is praying like that. He just wants devotional service, happiness in Krishna consciousness, so powerful that I can have all the other things just by being Krishna conscious. Okay, go ahead. Yes? Srila Rupa Goswami has analyzed the different sources of happiness. He has divided happiness into three categories, which are, number one, Happiness derived from material enjoyment. Two, happiness derived by identifying oneself with the Supreme Brahman. And three, happiness derived from Krishna Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Dr. Devotion, Chapter 1, Happiness in Krishna Consciousness, First Paragraph. All right. So three levels of happiness. Happiness derived from material enjoyment. And so that is the happiness of the material senses. It's going to be very temporary, it's going to be in relation to the material body. It won't last for, it won't be very great, we'll be there for some time. Just like, you know, maybe you get a new car, you feel very happy, oh my new car. How long are you happy with the new car? Somebody, somebody had a, his car the other day, he had an accident with it, his car got all broken. <laughs> so these cars are like that. They, they're very temp the happiness is very temporary. All right, and then happiness derived by identifying oneself with the Supreme Brahman. Well, we, ha we, we spoke about the, the impersonalists, the Mayavadis, how they identify themselves with the Supreme Brahman. So they go to the Supreme Brahman, but they don't like to stay there for long. 
After some time they get bored and come back to the material world because there's no activity. It becomes boring to be all alone, to be at one in the oneness, in the Brahman. You know, there's no real happiness there. And it, it, there. There's no suffering, but there's hardly any happiness. So real happiness is from Krishna consciousness. If we are actually in Krishna consciousness, then we will feel very happy. If you're not happy, then you're not in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada had one servant and, and Prabhupada was chastising him and Prabhupada told the servant, he said, if you are morose, if you are morose, morose means you're miserable, you're not happy, means you're not in devotional service. You're not Krishna conscious. So it should always be happy. In some places we're not just called Hare Krishna, we are called happy Krishnas, right? We're the happy Krishnas. Devotees always happy, always singing and dancing, chanting, blissful. Who else is doing that? Nobody. Go ahead. Oh. Happiness derived from Krishna consciousness is superior because. Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. One, it is eternal, whereas others are temporary. And. Third paragraph. One, it includes and excels the pleasures found in other types of happiness. Twelfth and thirteenth paragraphs. Okay, so we're, we're given two reasons why. Krishna consciousness is better happiness. First of all, it's eternal and the others are not. And then the second thing, it, it, it's greater happiness than the other happiness. It's much greater than the other kinds of happiness. The little happiness you get from the material world, a little happiness of the Brahman, but the happiness of devotional service is so great, it's so blissful. Devotee doesn't want anything. Yes, go ahead. Six characteristics of pure devotional service, moksha laguta grit. Those in pure devotional service deride even the, even the conception of liberation. And devotion, Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 1, Third Paragraph. The devotee, one who is doing devotional service, he doesn't worry about liberation. He's not concerned about it because he's, he's already liberated. In order to do devotional service, you have to be liberated. You have to come to the liberated platform. So they don't, one who is actually doing devotional service, he doesn't think about liberation. It's not, doesn't have any significance to him. Yes, go ahead. Moksha Lagutta Krit der derives the concept of liberation. In the Narada Pascharatra, it is also said that any person who has developed even a small amount of devotional service doesn't care a fig for any kind of happiness derived from religiousness, economic development, sense gratification, or the five kinds of liberation. It is stated that as the personal attendants and maidservants of a queen, Follow the queen with all respect and obeisances. Similarly, the joys of religiousness, economic development, sense gratification. Go ahead. Yes. And liberation. Follow the devotional service of the Lord. In other words, a pure devotee does not lack any kind of happiness derived from any source. He does not want anything but service to Krishna. But even if he should have another desire, the Lord fulfills this without the devotee's asking. Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1, Happiness in Krishna Consciousness, last paragraph. Okay. Yes, so there are five different kinds of liberation. The impersonalists, they only get one kind of liberation. The impersonalists, the Mayavadis, they get becoming one with the Supreme, merging. But there are four other kinds. 
which the devotee may get. The devotee will never get the impersonal liberation. He never wants to become one. But there are four other kinds of liberation which they may be given and which they may take if the Lord gives them. All right? One is, do you know these? Narayani Maharaji? Or Shubhamai Maharaji? Rikshna Maharaj, I think uh, <clears throat> I can try. I know a few, I think. So I, I think the impersonalists, they get uh, uh, merging or sa sahij, sahij, sa sahij, sahij, sahijya. Mm -hmm. sahijya. Sahijya. Yeah. And then uh, the other four are sarupya or getting the same um, form as the Lord. And um, um, samipya, staying near the Lord or staying in, in the abode of the Lord. And um, I forget the other two, my dad, sorry. Shalakko. Yeah. Huh? Shalakko. Shalokya. Shalokya is seeing in the same abode. Yes, Shalokya is on the same planet, yes. And then Shashti. the other one is Shashti. 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 The same opulences, enjoying the same opulences as the Lord. So we see. Is there bodily futures? Sorry? The same bodily futures? The same bodily feature. Yeah, we had that. Swa Swarupa. Mariji said that first. Swarupya. That came first. We saw like Uddhava. Uddhava had achieved Swarupya. He had the same bodily features as the Lord. And the, also, the, there was the false, pun, the false Vasudev. In the, in the tenth canto Bhagavatam or in the Krishna book, there's a story about the false Vasudev, Pondraka. And Pondraka had put on two arms. <laughs> he dressed himself up, he put on two arms, and he was telling Krishna, I should have that Surasan chakra, that's mine. I am the Supreme Lord, you're not the Supreme. <laughs> so Krishna threw the Surasan chakra. And it cut off his head. <laughs> he, he couldn't catch it. So, uh, Pundraka, when Krishna cut off his head, he liberated him and he got Swarupya Mukti when he went to the spiritual world. Okay, so five different kinds of liberation. No, no, wait, hey, go back, come on. Yeah, so five different kinds of liberation. The pure devotee doesn't desire any of them, but he may accept four, but he will never accept the Sayujya Mukti. He never wants to become one. And then Pr Prabhupada mentions, he said, pure devotee does not lack any kind of happiness derived from any source. So. Sometimes devotee may worry that, oh, I'm coming to Krishna consciousness, I'm, I'm not going to get much happy, I'm, it's all, it will be austerity, all tapasya, all suffering, it will be difficult, there will be no happiness. But actually Krishna arranges, you get everything. You want happiness, then Krishna will arrange it. You do service to Krishna, Krishna is not ungrateful. Krishna repays his devotees. You do a little service for Krishna and he'll give you a lot more back. And so Prabhupada mentions, if we do have a desire, then Krishna knows about it. How does Krishna know our desires? How so he's sitting within us as Paramatma. Yes, he's in the, our heart as Paramatma, so he knows our desires. So we may not ask him about it, we, may, we may, may not pray to Krishna, but Krishna knows what we want, so Krishna will fulfill it, because we have some desire like that. So you have to be very careful what you desire in your mind. If you keep material desires in your mind, that may become a problem for you later on. Because Krishna knows what's in our mind, so be careful. You, you, you may not ask him for something, but he knows what's in your heart and he will arrange it. 
Can you think of some people like that? Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Who? Uh, again, Maharaj, we can consider the example of Guru Maharaj. When he made Lord, so actually he did not want it that uh, he, you see, at the end he was free from all the material diyas. But Lord anyway gave him the kingdom. Yes, right, yes. Good. Yeah, Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj, actually when the Lord came, Dhruva Maharaj said, oh, I don't want anything, but the Lord said, no, you take it now. <laughs> he said, you had that desire. He said, now you take that desire. You have that desire. So we're giving it to you. So Dhruva Loka, there's a planet there. Dhruva Loka, the pole star. Dhruva Maharaj resides there for the duration of the life of Brahma. All right. Krishna Maharaj. Yes. We can also think of um, Bali Maharaj, right? Because he he did um, Ashwamedha Yajnas in order to become uh, Indra, and I think um, uh, uh, next Indra is going to be Bali Maharaj, right? Hmm. Krishna knows the desire of Bali Maharaj, and he's going to make him the next Indra. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good. Yes. So Bali Maharaj. So. Krishna knows everyone's desires, and Krishna is fulfilling the desires of everyone. All right, we'll go ahead. Next slide. Six characteristics of pure devotional service. Sudur Labha. Pure devotional service is rarely achieved. Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1, Third Paragraph. Why? Why will it be rarely achieved? Anyway, let's read this first. Go ahead, Prabhu. Sudur Labha, rarely achieved, cannot be achieved by one's own efforts. In the pre preliminary phase of spiritual life, there are different kinds of austerities, penances, and similar processes for attaining self-realization. First paragraph. But all such endeavors can hardly offer anyone devotional service to the Lord. Not even if one tries for it by such processes for many, many thousands of births. Second paragraph. Mm -mm. Okay, thank you. So, cannot, cannot be achieved by one's own efforts. Sudurlaba. Sudurlaba meaning rarely achieved. So, it's not just by our own efforts. So, maybe we shouldn't try. Maybe we shouldn't do anything. Eh? We may think, well, it's not my own effort, so why should I worry? Maybe I won't do anything. Maybe I'll just forget it. I'm just going to give up devotional service. No. We, it, it's achieved by the, the, the arrangement of Krishna, by the mercy of Lord Krishna. Causeless mercy. It cannot be achieved by one's own efforts. But we can... We can Try to attract the mercy of Krishna. We can try to prove ourselves worthy of the mercy of Krishna. It's not just mechanical though. It's not just because we do these things. Oh, I went to Mongol Arti every day. I should get pure devotional service. No. No. Not like that. And then, in the preliminary phase... There are different kinds of austerities, penances, and similar processes for attaining self-realization. So that is in the beginning. When we're new devotees, in, when we're new devotees, we need to do these things to purify ourselves. We do some austerities and penances, and in this way we start to develop an attraction more for hearing and chanting. But initially, in the beginning, we don't have much taste because we're sinful. We came with a lot of sinful reactions. We have to get rid of all of our sinful reactions. And that's why we, we do all of these different austerities and penances and things. And then we become more qualified for devotional service. And then the third se section, all such endeavours can hardly offer anyone devotional service, even if one tries for it. For many, many 
thousands of births. So I hope we're not going to have to do it for thousands of births, but it's possible. <laughs> so we should understand devotional service is something very rare and very special, and we should want to get the greatest benefit from it. The greatest benefit being that we get pure devotees, we become a pure devotee. And we give up all of our material desires. Then we will actually be successful. Okay, go ahead. Krishna rarely awards it. He, Krishna, rarely agrees to offer a sole devotional service. Because by devotional service, the Lord himself becomes purchased by the devotee. Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1, The Rareness of Pure Devotional Service, fourth paragraph. Can anyone think of an example where Krishna became purchased by the devotee? What happened? Oh, Mother Yashoda, she, uh, she was able to bind him because of her true love in the Damodar Lila. So thereby uh, he became purchased by her. No. And also Maharaj Ambarish, we can think of. What did Maharaj Ambarish do? Maharaj Ambarish was very uh, devoted. He was he was a great devotee of the Lord. So um, uh, the Lord himself stepped down to uh, protect him when uh, you know Durvasamuni Durva because of um, the offense of Durvasamuni he he was not ready to uh, he was not ready to save Durvasamuni. So he said, "You have because I'm purchased by." Um, Maharaj Ambrish, you have to go and get the, uh, you've done Vaishnava Prat, so you need to go and get the dust from his feet. Can we think of that example? Uh, I, I don't see that Maharaj Ambrish actually purchased the Lord. Okay. The, I, I'm not sure about this. I, let me think about it a bit more. Let me see what happened. Maharaj Ambrish, uh, it, of course, Ma, uh, Durvasa Muni couldn't get free from the curse by going to the Lord. And the Lord said that this Sudarshan chakra is under, under the control of my devotee. That if you want to get free, you have to go to the devotee. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, on this thing we can see the example of movies. I cannot agree with you. I'm, and your voice is not clear, Prabhu, very echoing. All right, yes. Krishna said, I cannot repay you. Yeah. Krishna told the gopis he couldn't repay the, go the gopis. Hare Krishna Maharaj, how about the Arjuna? Yes, Arjuna is a good example. That's the example given in the text, in the book. The example was given that Arjuna, he purchased Krishna. Krishna became his chariot driver. So Krishna was purchased by the devotee. He be Krishna became the servant of his devotee. Mm -hmm. And there's another example. The other example is Maharaj Yudhisthira. Because Krishna became the messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. You know, before the battle, they wrote a letter to give to Dhritarashtra to ask him that, you know, let's not do have the battle. Better we make peace and we will settle everything without going to war. And Krishna took that letter there and gave it to them. 
And when Krishna brought the letter to Dhritarashtra and Duryodhan, then Duryodhan, of course, he didn't want any peace and he threw, no, 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 we're not going to do this. He w they wouldn't accept the letter. And Duryodhan even tried to capture Krishna. He tried to capture Krishna at that time. He thought oh, he would make a plan to capture Krishna and keep him there. Although Krishna had come just simply to deliver the letter, Duryodhan tried to break the etiquette and tried to capture Krishna. And at that time Krishna showed his universal form. So Duryodhan, he couldn't of course capture the universal form. So Krishna had to accept, you know, he had to do these kind of things. He became the chariot driver for Arjuna and he became a messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. So he's, a, he, he's a, like controlled by the pure love of his devotee. And just as Maharaj said, like Mother Yashoda, she can tie up Krishna. Oh yeah? So these, these are some examples. This is why Krishna rarely gives devotional service. He will rarely give pure devotional service because he becomes purchased. He becomes controlled and certainly he's, he's also controlled by the, the gopis, the gopis of Vrindavan. Krishna said, I cannot repay my debt to you. The gopis purchase Krishna by their pure love. That is a fact. Okay, go ahead. Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, can we <coughs> give the example of that uh, 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 dust of uh, gopis that Krishna, uh, Krishna wanted to put on the head? The okay. dust of the gopis to cure his headache. Headache, yes. Mm. But I don't see how it's real in relation to being purchased. You know. Krishna becomes purchased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's indebted. Certainly, he's he's under the control of the gopis. So, yeah, you you could maybe you could also say that. I know in in the book the two examples are given: Arjuna and Yudhisthira. Though those are the best ones. The Prabhupada gave those two examples. Others are also there. So go, we'll go ahead, yeah. All right. So Sandra Nanda Vishesh Atma. Go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, pure devotional service automatically puts one in transcendental pleasure. Nectar devotion, chapter one, third paragraph. Mm. Yes. So we see there's different kinds of pleasure. Right? There's different kinds of pleasure. This is the highest pleasure, incalculable, condensed bliss. Anybody want some? Would you like some incalculable, condensed bliss? Or do you just, yes. want, you just want the condensed milk? <laughs> the condensed condensed prasadam, right? The condensed sweet meat. So this is condensed bliss, incalculable condensed bliss. Yeah, go ahead. We've got one verse. Sorry, what? Yes. Satyananda Visheshatma, incalculable condensed bliss. Brahmananda Bhavadesha Chetparag. Parada guni krita naiti bhakti sukham bode paramanu tulam api bhakti rasamrita sindhu 1.1.38. Yes, good. Srila Rupa Goswami says that if Brahmananda or the happiness of becoming one with the Supreme is multiplied by one trillion fold, it still cannot compare to an atomic fraction of the happiness derived from the ocean of devotional service. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 1, The Happiness of Becoming One with the Supreme. Okay, alright, so we said, remember, there were three kinds of happiness. There's material happiness, which is very temporary and very uh, flickering, not very real. 
And then there's happiness of becoming one with the Brahman. This is described here. But then the happiness of becoming one with the Brahman, it's greater than material happiness. But still, it's, it cannot even compare to a fraction of the happiness from real devotional service, from prema bhakti. That the happiness of prema bhakti, the happiness which they get in pure devotional service is so much greater. The happiness of Brahman, that's just a tiny, tiny little bit. They're not going to get much happiness from that. A little bit of happiness, no misery. So that's nice. Okay, go ahead. Okay, levels of happiness. Shubhada. Shubhada, remember that we're talking, we're still talking about sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti. And so there's, we get real relief from miseries and then we get also some happiness. The happiness of, the happiness of coming to the Brahman, the happiness of being free of the material body. So it said, Subhada, in sadhana bhakti, superior to happiness of sense gratification or liberation. Then moksha laguta krit, in bhava bhakti. So you can see there's different kinds of happiness. There's happiness in sadhana bhakti. Now we're talking about number three, happiness in bhava bhakti. It's going to be different. There's different levels of happiness. Just like there's happiness in ignorance, there's happiness in passion, there's happiness in goodness. So there's also happiness in sadhana bhakti, in bhava bhakti and in prema bhakti. So the happiness in Bhava Bhakti minimizes the value of sense gratification or liberation. And the happiness in Prema Bhakti so incalculably superior that one cannot even perceive the existence of sense gratification or liberation. So we see happiness in each of the different levels, but different kinds of happiness. Happiness in sadhana bhakti, happiness in bhava bhakti, and happiness in prema bhakti. Okay, go ahead. Shri Krishna Karshini, pure devotional service, the only means to attract Krishna, right? Who's going to attract Krishna? How to attract Krishna? We have to do pure devotional service. It's the only way to attract Krishna. Must do pure service. All right? Okay. Can read Prabhu? Shri Krishna Karshini attracts Krishna. To perform devotional service means to follow in the footsteps of Radharani, and devotees in Vrindavan put themselves under the care of Radharani in order to achieve perfection in their devotional service. So, being directly under the control of the internal potency of Krishna, devotional service attracts even Krishna himself. Factor Devotion, Chapter 1, Attracting Krishna, Second Paragraph. All right, to perform devotional service means to follow in the footsteps of Srimati Radharani and devotees of Vrindavan put themselves under the care of Radharani in order to achieve perfection. So we see in Vrindavan people are very fond of Srimati Radharani. Everywhere they've written on the walls, Radhe Radhe, Jai Sri Radhe. We are very confidential about Srimati Radharani. We don't speak much about Srimati Radharani in Krishna consciousness. 
we will speak about Krishna consciousness and we will speak about devotional service. But we don't let everybody know, we're not, we don't make a big public thing about Srimati Radharani because it's a very confidential subject matter. The problem is people may think that the relationship between Krishna and Srimati Radharani is something mundane. But it's not mundane. It's a very pure spiritual relationship. We say Radha and Krishna are one. Srimati Radharani is the Ladini Shakti. Her potent, she's the personification of Krishna's pleasure potency. So her purpose is just to give pleasure to Krishna. And we can take shelter of Srimati Radharani to perfect our devotional service. When we want to offer something to Krishna, if we offer it first to Srimati Radharani, then she will bring it to Krishna. And if, she's, if Radharani said, this is brought for you by the devotee, then certainly Krishna will accept it, because Radharani is very dear to Lord Krishna. So if Srimati Radharani brings something to offer to Krishna, Krishna will appreciate it. He'll be very pleased. But Maharaj, can we directly offer to Srimati Radharani or we have to offer it to our Guru Maharaj so that he can forward it? Well, that's the better process, yes, that we go through the spiritual teacher because we don't know how we don't know how to go directly to Srimati Radharani. Just like we cannot go directly to Krishna, we cannot go directly to Srimati Radharani. We have to go through our spiritual teacher and he will arrange for it to be offered. Either through Radharani or through Lord Nityananda. It can be offered to Lord Nityananda and then Lord Nityananda will offer it to Lord Chaitanya. Of course, there are many, many millions of gopis. We want to go to Krishna. We cannot just go directly. So many people, if everyone goes directly, it would be terrible for Lord Krishna. There's so many people coming all the time. So we have to go through the spiritual teacher. And the spiritual teacher is the representative of Srimati Radharani. So this is the way to attract Krishna by you get the mercy of Radharani. Devotees in Vrindavan, they, they put themselves under the care of Radharani to achieve perfection. So under the care means they will meditate, they will chant the holy name of Srimati Radharani. And we are chanting. We also chant the name of Radharani when we chant the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare means Srimati Radharani. There is no difference between the chanting of Radha Krishna and Hare Krishna. Hare represents Srimati Radharani. So when we're chanting, we're also approaching the divine couple. We're approaching Krishna through his potency, through his chit shakti, and the personification of Srimati Radharani. So when people would say Radhi Radhi to Prabhupada, Prabhupada would just say Hare Krishna. He would just say Hare Krishna. He wouldn't say Radhi Radhi. He wouldn't say Hare Hare. He would just say Hare Krishna. Go ahead. All right. So six characteristics. We've looked at each of them now. Klesh Agni, relief from distress. Subhada, 
meaning beginning of all auspiciousness. Moksha Laguta Krit derives even the conception of liberation. Sudurlabha, rarely achieved. Sandrananda Vishesh Atma puts one in transcendental bliss. And Sri Krishna Karshini, the only means to attract Krishna. Go ahead. All right, so three kind first klesh agni, relief from material distress. What is the cause of distress? Where does suffering come from? What's the cause of distress? Who knows? Simple activity. Simple, ignorance. Simple activities, one cause. What's the root cause of distress? Ignorance. 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 The root cause is ignorance, right. And what comes, because of ignorance, then what happens? Then we get material desires. And then from material desires, then we do material activities. We engage in sinful activities. So that's a relationship. The cause of sinful activities, the root cause is ignorance. And that because of ignorance, material desires, and then because of material desires, sinful activities. And this is the cause of material distress, three causes of distress. And then, subhada, all auspicious. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One more. Yes. So, there are four signs of auspiciousness. First of all, we should be compassionate for everyone. We should care about people. Not just only think of ourselves. We must be concerned for others. We should be selfless, not selfish. And then the second thing, that it attracts everyone. Krishna is all attractive. And if we're doing activities of devotional service, that should attract people. The third thing produces good qualities. Even though we may not be very well materially educated, but we can have good qualities. And people who are educated materially they may not have good qualities. They may be very poor, they may be very degraded. And then the fourth thing bestows, su bestows superior happiness, right? the highest happiness. So those are the four characteristics of auspiciousness. We said the highest welfare work for all humanity, devotional service. Right? And then number three, moksha laguta krit, derives liberation. Number four, sudurlabha, rarely achieved. Why? It cannot be achieved by our own endeavor. And Krishna rarely gives it. He rarely rewards anyone with it. So it's very rare, so Durlabha. And then Sundrananda Visheshatma, incalculable, condensed bliss, a very deep level of happiness there. If their happiness is like that, it's very great. Go ahead. Number six, Sri Krishna Karshini, the only means to attract Krishna. You want to attract Krishna? What is the way? How to do it? How are you going to attract Krishna? 
Pure devotional activities. Yes, pure devotional activities. Very good. Right. Go ahead. Oh, go back. Under the control. Go back. Under the control of the internal potency of Krishna. So that is that is Sri Krishna Karshini is under the control of Krishna. Okay, go ahead. All right. Now now it's up to you. We want to see a short drama from you to show some aspects about devotional service. So we have four groups, right? So you have to give a, a short drama. You want, we want to see how we get these characteristics in devotional service. So the first group will be the three Chinese ladies. They will do the one about Klesh Agni. You have to show a drama. And then the second group we have Three ladies, right? We have uh, Narayani Madhaji and we have also uh, Subhamai and also Mataji. Subhamai Mataji. Subhamai and Narayani and, and the, Sandhya Mataji. Who? Sandhya Mataji is not here today, Maharaj. Sandhya. Sandhya Mataji is not here today. So, so only. Two. So you're two ladies, okay? So you have to show about auspiciousness, Shubhada, right? We want a, a little drama, five minutes or three minutes, you can tell, tell us about Shubhada, show us in a drama, a dramatic form. And then we have, we have uh, three men, we have Bhakta Vatsalna Sringa and Vibhu Chaitanya and Bhakta, Bhakta Ilyas. 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 Uh, so they will do the one about uh, difficult to achieve, Sudurlaba. Difficult to achieve, very rarely achieved, right? And then we have Shashikan and also Sudarshan Prabhu. So you can do Krishna Karshini. Okay. All right? So give okay, you Maharaj. give you five minutes to prepare. You have five minutes to prepare. Then we want to see. Don't... Shall I send everyone in breakout rooms? Yes. Okay. Breakout rooms. Okay, so Vibhu Chaitanya and, uh, yeah, okay, good, yes. So everybody go to a group, just spend a few minutes and figure out how you can do it.
Okay. I think by mistake we clicked on leave room. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We are prepared. We are prepared. It's okay. okay. Do you like to begin then? What <laughs> is, what are you showing us? You're showing us about Shubhada. 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 Just let the other devotees come. Let yes, the other devotees not here yet. They're all talking, I guess. Yeah. Oh, oh Malin has come. Oh. <laughs> Hi Krishna. <laughs> Okay, the men here, the, just let the men come. Maharaj, everyone is back. Okay, okay, so we're going to see first of all Subhada from Naraini Mataji and Shobhamai Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandar Pranams Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I hope we are able to do some justice <laughs> to the topic. Yeah, so basically, um, just setting the context, uh, so there is this devotee. Um, devotee Mataji and uh, a new um, lady joins or uh, uh, moves in the same locality. So she has a new neighbor. So uh, this Mataji, uh, this devotee Mataji shows some compassion and decides to go and call that other neighbor, the, uh, the other Mataji for a Damodar Arti program at her place. So that is a context. So I will be playing the role of the devotee Mataji and uh, Sushmita Narayani Mataji is the other Mataji. So that is the scene. We will begin now. So I just ring the bell then I say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hello. Yeah. So I just wanted to, nice that you have moved in here. Nice to meet you. I am uh, Shobha Mai. Um, I would like to call you for a program at our house on uh, Saturday. So this is a this is a, a spiritual program. So if you can please make it along with your uh, other family members, it would be nice. It is uh, the program will go on for about two hours, and then uh, there will be prasadam also dinner prasadam. So you please honor the prasadam, and then you can leave. Um, I'm not sure if I have time, but if I do get time, then I will come. Please do try, because I'm sure this will help you. Uh, so please try, hoping to see you on uh, Saturday. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then coming Saturday, uh, the program, it's a Damodarati program where uh, uh, we have set up a nice uh, altar with a Damodar picture and nice decorations. And um, uh, we have, of course, made arrangements for uh, Prasadam. And there is a speaker who is going to share the Damodar Katha. So this Narayani Mataji walks in. Um, then, Hare Krishna, so nice to see you. I'm so glad that you have found time. And uh, please do make yourself comfortable. Yeah, thank you very much. I am really liking it here. It's really beautiful. Thank you yeah. so much. That is, that is the picture you see over there. That is the picture of Damodar, who is none, um, you know, if you, uh, if we will be talking, the speaker, this, this Prabhu has come over here and will be sp speaking about the um, pastime of Damodar Leela. So I hope you like the story. And after the, after the program, 
uh, of course, the speaker has spoken about the Damodar Leela and this Mataji is uh, really attracted by, by that. So after the program, there is the Prasadam distribution. So during the Prasadam, um, Mataji goes and speaks. Hare Krishna Mataji, I hope you like the uh, program. I hope you like the uh, story. Yes. And I hope you're liking the Prasadam. Yeah, it's quite impressive. Uh, the Prasadam is really tasty. I've never tasted anything like this before. Oh, and did you like the story, Nathaji? Yeah, it's really beautiful. Do you want to know more about uh, Krishna? Um, yeah, a little bit interested. Okay, so this is a book it's called Krishna, and uh, it is very beautifully, all the nice stories, many, many such stories are given in this book. And very beautifully, the author is uh, Srila Prabhupada, who has written wonderful um, in, in a way that you can we can understand in a story form. So if you're interested, you can uh, read this book. And uh, also, the as Prabhu was mentioning, the importance of chanting. It would be nice if you can just take five minutes of your time every day and chant. These are the beads. If you, if you have time, just five minutes. One full round is going to take only about five to seven minutes. And the mantra, as the Prabhu was saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This is what you have to chant. Please do try. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, you will feel good and you will develop all wonderful qualities. Now that you have already, you're already attracted by this. If you can, if you do this, you will be, you will develop all wonderful qualities. Uh, there's no harm in trying. Maybe I could try that. Just take seven minutes, as you're saying. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so please do try. And if you are interested, every Sunday we have a Kirtan program. You can join us where we will be sharing some a little bit of knowledge also. So please do try. Okay, Madhuji, thank you so much. Okay, so try. then after a after, uh, couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks, we, that Mataji comes again for that Sunday program. So, Hare Krishna, so nice to see you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji, it's really good to see you after a long time. Yeah, and so nice to see you with your chanting beads also. I can make out yeah. that you're chanting. Wow. I'm, I'm really indebted to you Mataji. After, after I met you in that program, I've been attending the temple programs every week and it has really brought a, so, a sense of joy in me and I've never felt this kind of happiness before. And now yeah. I really want to be like one of those devotees. They inspire me so much. They're so kind-hearted and they're really, really sweet to me. And I've even, uh, I even bring some of my family members at the program. Hey, <laughs> nice to hear, Mataji. And I can see that uh, your attitude has also changed. And uh, do you see a change in yourself in terms of your uh, behavior, your attitude, Mataji? Yes, Mataji. Earlier, I used to be uh, very angry and I used to get angry even at the little stuff. But nowadays, uh, it has, uh, I mean, I'm a little bit uh, more, uh, I mean, I'm not so angry. I don't get angry. Yeah, I will. Thank you so much, Mataji, for taking this up. I'm sure you will experience great happiness, greatest happiness in this journey. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Oh, very nice. Thank you very much, ladies. Very well done. <laughs> May the devotee. I wish, huh? was, I wish it was so easy to convince others. Maharaj. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you had a, you had it easy. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. What about the Chinese ladies? Are you ready? Lila yes. Avatar. Sitala? Uh, Meling. Meling? Meling? Yes, yes. Uh, Meling, you like to do pang by, and you do now, make a sure, and what you do, she did, and you do not nail any heart, Sitala, to you, to you, nail any heart. Okay, okay. Oh, Munkashiva, what I found by, and I hold you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so now we talk uh, the story about the chapter four, uh, the chapter, uh, the Bhagavad Gita glories, uh, <laughs> the chapter four Bhagavad Gita glories. 
uh, as uh, said about the story is uh, the can uh, the Inder was always the uh, Satya Tapa because Satya Tapa was so purified and uh, and and uh, sublime to the to the Lord the the Indra was so envious the stage. So he orders the two servants to luring luring the stage. And now there have uh, the Bharat was passed by this place. He was chanting the chapter four. She is take a rest on the on the on the on the on the, on the tree, uh, he took a rest on the tree, and uh, now after after he left, uh, there have two souls liberate from the trees. The two souls uh, uh, born again as uh, born in the uh, Brahma, uh, born in uh, born as the Brahma's daughter. When the when this uh, two when these two girls grow up. He go to the pilgrim. He met the great uh, sage Bharat. The so, and uh, when when she met the Sri Bar, uh, Bar, 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 Bharat Maharaja and uh, they worship under his uh, lotus feet and then they sighed. Then they died. <laughs> <笑>你是那里的女孩啊你说的那里的女孩女孩哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎呦哎
father material desires are available for dogs hogs do you want me to be a dog or a hog my son it looks like you become more interested than me so if, if you don't hear me i'll kill you father are you ignorant how you cannot kill me because i am not this body i am the soul and you can you can kill this body but you cannot kill me okay you say no हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय नृसिंह भगवान की ओके दैट्स इट प्रभु यस प्रभु दैट्स इट ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच Let's go back to our slide show. Can we go back to the slide show? Prabhu? Baladev? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. There's another slide. The objectives, right? So we spoke about the six characteristics of pure devotional service. At what stage they manifest? Right? Six characteristics. Two manifest at the stage of sadhana bhakti, four manifest at the stage of bhava bhakti, and six manifest at the stage of prema bhakti. Right? Everybody understand that? Yes, Maharaj. We're okay on that. And then we spoke about how Krishna consciousness movement performs the highest welfare activity. The highest welfare activity. What do we do? We make propaganda to give people Krishna consciousness. We distribute prasadam. We di we distribute books. We do festivals. We try to we show compassion to people. to give them krishna consciousness okay so that's mainly the the things we covered today here's the quote final quote from prabhupad he remained with those royal brothers being attracted by their devotion by their friendship and by their love that is a proof of how great this process of devotional service is it can attract even the supreme personality of godhead god is great but devotional service is greater than god because it attracts him people who are not in devotional service can never understand what great value there is in rendering service to the lord so this is a very nice quote right devotional service attracts krishna god is great but devotional service is greater than god because it attracts him krishna is attracted by devotional service we just saw prahlad maharaj chanted hari krishna and i appeared Nishinga I was Nishinga Dev and when he chanted Hare Krishna I was attracted by the devotion Nishinga Dev So Krishna is attracted by pure devotion All right Yes go ahead Srila Prabhupad ki jai All right So let me see we we want to have a look at that how we would show the drama for these devotees those three boys the three men who are going to do it bhakta uh, bhakta vatsala nishinga prabhu and uh, vibhu chaitanya and bhakta ilyas how we how they could do a drama about rarely achieved Somebody's got some suggestions? 
Do you have any, did you have any ideas? Vibhut, yes, Mark. Vibhut. We're thinking of doing the examples that you gave of um, Krishna and Arjuna or Krishna and Yudhishthira. Yeah. But then we couldn't really think of what dialogue to include exactly. Well, uh, dialogue, you, you know that one dialogue you could do, you could have uh, Duryodhan and, and Krishna and Arjuna, they both went to Krishna and they wanted Krishna for their side. So Krishna said, I'm not going to fight, but I'll be the chariot driver for somebody and other person can have my army. So Duryodhan said, yeah, I want your army. And Arjuna said, yeah, I want you to be my chariot driver. So you could have made the drama like that, the dialogue like that. You just, uh, Durya, Duryodhana and Arjuna and Krishna, and they're asking Krishna to come on my side. We want Krishna, Krishna, I'm not going to fight. But I can be the chariot driver if you want. Or you can have my army. What? Right? And if it was Maharaj Yudhisthira, then you just You know, I have a letter, I want you to take this letter to Dhritarashtra. Then you could have had, you know, make a dialogue like that. And Krishna has to take the letter and then Krishna comes back and says, Oh, I took the letter, but they tried to arrest me. I had to show my universal form. <laughs> and you can do like that, you see. All right, now what about the Chinese ladies? Lila Avatar, what was your drama yes. about? Tell me, what is the drama? What's the story of the drama? The story of drama. Yes? What was your story? Tell me. Sita is Sitala is the two ghosts. Uh, yes, um, but uh, within the <laughs> within the do it. You didn't do it. Yeah. No, I wanted to understand what you were trying to do first. Oh, Maylin was just telling the background. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. She was telling the background. So the background was... Uh, yes, uh, was the background was... Uh, uh, the Saint Bharata uh, lived at the Bank of Ganges. Um, Bharata uh, reciting the, the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita uh, on a tree. He is lying on a tree, chanting the uh, first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And uh, um, uh, only by this, uh, um, the Sindh Bharata um, um, liberated uh, two souls. But, uh, but he, he didn't know about this. Where were the souls? Where were they? They were different of the Indra's. The servant of the Indians is the heavenly fairy. It was the heavenly planets. Yes. I thought you said they were in the Himalayas. I thought it was Bharat in the Himalayas. Bharat was in the Himalayas. He wasn't in the heavenly planets. Huh? I don't know that. Where is this story from? It's from the glories of Bhagavad Gita. The chapter 4, Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 glories. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, the Indra was the other case servant to 
to to have sex show like this with the stage because the, the indra was always the stage so because indra is angry and he orders his servant to in in you <laughs> to to illusion oh. to illusion the stage so this is the story and after that there has another uh barat The barat. Uh, yes. uh, the, the, the two souls are in a uh, two um two uh, fruit trees. Uh, the Saint Barat uh, used one tree as the pillow and the one tree as as a chair uh, under his feet. Oh. Uh, that's the two souls. The, the two souls in the um, two fruit trees. Oh. And they got liberated by hearing the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So, I, what has this got to do with distress? All right? We said that you were supposed to talk oh. about how we get relief. Relief they, from distress. In, they are in the tree. In the tree, it's a, um, it's and the, the distress is a, because they are in the tree. Oh, because they're in the tree. It's a punishment, is it? They're in the tree. Yes, yes. Oh. And so they got relief because he chanted the Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Okay. Is that all? Well, it, I don't know. It's not a story we all know. I, I didn't know it. I never heard it before. It's, uh, it's from the Gita Mahatmya Maharaj. Um, the glories of each and every chapter, it's mentioned. There's a small book called Gita Mahatmya. Yeah. Where it's, from the, it's from the Padma Puran, where each and every chapter, um, um, the glories are explained in the form of these Last times uh -huh. which Pandaji was sharing. Okay. Yeah, this is on chapter four. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So you knew it. <laughs> I never read it. I never read this Gita Mahatmya. Hmm. Okay. Are there any questions? Anybody? Are you okay? Are we keeping up with the course? All right. No problems. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. No problem. So we'll meet you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakti Vrindaki. Gaur Bhakti Vrindaki.